so uh, with me here is a function f of x is equals to absolute value of x and I have to find um, or I have to determine the uh, the Fourier series of this function and I'm told that um, it has a period uh, 2 pi okay so that's one of the important things that I'm that I'm told about um, about this function okay so uh, one thing that you have to understand about the absolute value of x is that uh, this is actually x um, absolute value of x is same as writing it in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, a step function which is going to be uh, positive okay and which is going to be negative okay and uh, there are two things that you have to take into consideration that is positive when x is greater than or equal to zero then it's negative when x is less than less than zero okay so when it comes to determining the Fourier series of a given function first of all what you need to find or what we actually find that gives us everything else that we need are the Fourier coefficients that is a naught a sub n as well as b sub n okay there are some cases where by uh, some questions they are very simplified in that uh, if you have found your a sub n you find that your b sub n is zero or if you find your b sub n you find that your a sub n is zero or there are even times when the a naught is equal to zero okay so just remind ourselves the way we find our um, uh, Fourier, co uh, Fourier co coefficients we say a naught is going to be equals to um, and actually this one depends on the uh, depends on the on the equation that you are that you are using okay this one depends on the equation that you're using so now uh, what I mean by the equation is this is where I say if my f of x is equals to let's say a naught uh, a naught plus the summation um, infinite sum from n is equals to um, that is uh, that is from n is equals to 1 okay from n is equals to 1 to infinity then a sub n then that is cos cos n of x let me say plus infinite sum from n is equals to 1 to infinity then b sub n sine sin n x okay so there there is a video uh, that uh, where I demonstrated how you come up with the expressions for the Fourier coefficients you can take a look at it you find the link in the description okay so uh, how we find these um, uh, Fourier coefficients is that the a naught okay so this is true there are also times when this is divided by 2 and you also need to pay attention to that so if this is just divided by one, if there is just a naught there, the way you're going to find your a naught is you're going to say it's uh, one over two pi. Uh, then you put your period there. Okay, it can be from minus pi uh, to pi, or from zero to two pi uh, of f of x dx. Okay, then your a sub n is going to be equals to one over pi uh, from minus pi to pi of f of x um, f of x cos um, f of x cos cos nx like that dx then um, the b sub n b sub n is 1 over pi from minus pi to pi of um, f of x sine uh, sine n of x dx like that and that's how we determine the Fourier coefficient so it's just a matter of you being able to find the Fourier coefficients then after that you go ahead and write your uh, your expression okay so let's go ahead and determine our Fourier coefficients so uh, for this one right here uh, there are two ways in which you can answer this question in terms of you finding the Fourier coefficients you can choose to waste your time and do this check this out you can write it by saying a naught uh, you can say a naught is equals to uh, since there are two of them here okay so and if you, these here are the intervals that I have okay and remember to say the period is uh, the period is 2 pi so at 
can choose to write this as 1 over 2 pi okay evaluating from uh, uh, from minus pi to what from minus pi to pi of the absolute value of x dx which I can write as 1 over 2 pi uh, evaluating from uh, that's going to be from minus pi to 0 okay from minus pi to 0 I'm looking at this one here okay meaning that's uh, here we're going to put minus x dx plus um, I say 1 over 2 pi from 0 to pi I'm still within the same interval I'm still moving from minus pi to positive pi okay so in this case now it's going to be what positive x d x like that you can choose to do this is practically okay but here is how you can simplify your work for yourself you can look at this in terms of a graph because all you are doing right here is just determining the area over the period that you are given okay so in this case if you graph this one okay if you graph that function we remember say the graph was something like this when we are when we are sketching in some uh, previous video so this is the sketch for this function so what it tells us that if you if here you have minus pi okay and here you have what here you have uh, here you have minus pi there you have positive pi okay something like that so what this tells you is that uh, you have pi in the x okay you have pi in the x and because this seems to be like an identity function simply means if f of x is equal to x meaning if x is pi even y is also going to be equal to what is going to be is also going to be equal to pi so even at this point you also have what you also have pi in the y axis this is your y axis so you can choose to find this area right here okay then multiply it by 2 to come up with that area there or add it like like you add it by itself twice okay so either use this method it's okay it will work I'm not saying it won't work actually I wrote it down somewhere uh, it worked I tried both methods what I'm what I'm going to show which is the easiest way and also this method here is also going to work okay so what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to find the area that is here okay or I'm just going to evaluate for that one then I'm just going to double it then it will give me the uh, it will give me the the entire um, the entire area which is which will represent a naught okay so since that starts from 0 to pi we're just going to say um, a naught remember I'm talking about from 0 to what 0 to pi okay is equals to 1 over 2 pi from 0 to from 0 to pi of x dx this is equals to pi over 2 pi then uh, when you integrate this one this is going to give you x squared over 2 then you evaluate from 0 to what 0 to pi this is going to be 1 over 2 pi then when you substitute that's going to be pi squared over 2 okay so this is going to be something like uh, pi over pi over 4 okay so now this is what you get and that is just for one side like this but remember you have another side on the other end which is this one so you can just double that uh, just double that mean just multiply it by 2 you're going to get pi over over 2 and that's your uh, that's your a naught a naught so it, you have determined that a naught is actually equals to pi over 2 and there we have it very important so you can use this method I guarantee you you're going to get the same thing you're going to get simply one and the same thing yeah so let's go ahead and find uh, the other try to find the other uh, the other Fourier coefficients okay so the sec the the second coefficient that I'll, I'll want to find um, in this case is uh, a sub n Okay, so a sub n is simply equals to 1 over pi okay so even this one as well we are still looking at the same graph so I can just evaluate from what I can just evaluate from um, 
I can just evaluate from zero to uh, from zero to pi, okay? From zero to pi, instead of me writing like my from minus pi to zero, then again plus from zero to pi. That is going to take me a lot of time. The graph has simplified everything, and it, this is not always the case. You need to pay attention to the graph of uh, or the sketch of the function that you have. So in this case, I have f of x, which is x multiplied by cos cos n of x dx. Okay. So at this stage, uh, this is where we bring in our old friends, um, the integration by uh, parts. Yeah, so we're going to say our u is equals to, we say our u is equals to x, meaning du will be equals to dx. So dv will be equals to cos n of x dx, meaning v will be equals to uh, sine n of x divided by, divided by n, like that, okay? So we observe that by integration by pass, this is going to be equals to, um, I still have my 1 over pi outside, okay? So u by v, that's going to be x by sine n of x divided by, divided by n. Evaluating from 0 to pi, then we say minus v du, okay? This is a constant here, so I can just place it outside. That would be 1 over n integrating from 0 to pi of sine n of x uh, dx. You close the bracket because of what you have right here. Very important. Okay. So, this one right here gives you a zero. So, you can forget about that. Okay. So, we can say our a sub n is equals to uh, this one multiplied by what you have here. Okay. What are you going to have? Uh, this is going to be equals to minus 1 over pi n, like that. Then if you integrate this one, the integral of sine is minus cos. So it will be minus cos n of x divided by, divide by n. You are evaluating from 0 to 2 pi. Okay? Then that negative there, I can actually uh, get rid of it. I can just multiply this one by that one, and this n by that n. This is going to be equals to. Um, we are going to say our a sub n will be equals to one over pi n squared. Okay. Then in the brackets we still have cos n x. We are evaluating from 0 to, uh, to pi. Okay, so remember we already found our a naught. We are just finding our a sub n. So this right here is what I have. Okay, like that. So now let's go ahead and evaluate. So we say a sub n will be equals to 1 over pi n squared. So um, we are going to say this will be cos, cos pi n or n pi, it doesn't matter, minus. If you plug in 0 where there's x, that's going to be cos 0, which is a 1, like that. Okay? So now this is a very, very important part. You usually come across such. Pay attention to this one. So at this point, there there is a time when n is a one, n can can be a two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like the number keeps on going. You can't just say, oh, if n is because for example here, if if n is um, let's say if n is two, okay. If n is a two meaning this is going to be cos 2 pi, which is actually positive 1. So that will be 1 minus 1, giving you a 0. Okay? Okay, so 
this is going to give you a zero so now um, these numbers they can keep on they, they'll be they'll be keeping on changing now I want to find a generalized way of writing this okay so I can just conclude and say oh okay I'm going to write it in terms of maybe n is 2 or maybe n is 3 there are a lot of numbers that that we can use okay let's say you choose 2 me I choose a 1 someone else chooses a 3 we want to find a generalized way of writing this so all we can write is that we can say a sub n will be equals to 1 over pi over n squared uh, then this is going to be uh, I can write this as minus 1 okay minus 1 to the power n minus 1 this is kind of like a generalized way because there's a time when this is positive 1 and this time when it's negative 1 so this is actually what um, um, this is a way in which we can write uh, a sub n but remember I've only evaluated from 0 to what from 0 to pi initially I was, I was even also supposed to evaluate from minus pi to what to 0 so meaning I need to double this one so we need to multiply that by 2 because when you double it you're going to find that your a sub n uh, let me write it here we're going to find that your a sub n is going to be equals to 2 over pi n squared then we'll have minus 1 n by to the power n minus 1 like that and that is one of the uh, coefficients that I was looking for then when it comes to b sub n, uh, b sub n is going to be equals to zero. You can try it on your own. I'm going to leave that part for you. This is going to be zero. You can try it on your own. It will actually give you a zero. Okay. So now let's look at um, how this, how everything finishes. Remember, this is supposed to be in the form f of x is equals to a naught plus. Uh, the summation from n is equals to 1 to infinity of a sub n cos n of x like that or something plus I'm supposed to have something for b sub n but because b sub n is equals to 0 I don't have to consider it okay so therefore the Fourier series that I have okay uh, the Fourier series that I have for the absolute value of x okay is equals to my a, uh, my a naught is pi over pi over 2 okay pi over 2 plus so here I can try to substitute some values for example starting from n is equals to 1 n is equals to 2 n is equals to 3 on and on and on you can just try to pick out some values and you're obviously going to come up with something like uh, let's say 4, 4 over pi then you're going to have cos cos x plus cos uh, plus cos 3x over 3 squared plus cos 5x over 5 squared plus cos 7x over 7 squared plus and it will just keep on going like that this is what you're going to um, end up with you can just try out some values and that's what you're going to have and that's our Fourier series for our uh, absolute value of x okay so once again the a naught might be different and the reason why the only reason why it might be different is if you didn't use this but used uh, something where you have divide by 2 here like that so meaning you are going to say your a naught is equals to 1 over pi instead of 1 over 2 pi then <coughs> excuse me from minus pi or from 0 to, to 2 pi of f of x that's the difference okay so if you follow this square this divide by 2 that's how you find your a naught but otherwise the a sub n and the b sub n regardless we just find them the same way okay so that's why before even put the final answer it's important to write this equation so that the person who is assessing you if it's an assessment they'll be able to see uh, what equation that you have used so that's basically how we um, <coughs> find the Fourier series of an absolute value function I could have chosen a longer method by uh, looking at these two cases the for both positive and negative then adding them together but because the graph or the sketch has simplified work for me I know that the two sides are identical I just find for one side I multiplied by 2 
and that's the equal area for both sides and that's how we do it thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one